Continuing on from the last video, I am going to be looking at creating fake gels with this image here. So as you can see, this is the image here that we are going to be using. And if I go in here and show you the before and after, you can see it's quite a difference has been made to the image. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you the different elements of the masks that are created to do this. Now, what we're doing here is we're creating fake gels and nothing beats using gels in the studio. But sometimes you don't have access to this and you don't have access to different lights. So it's also fun as well to learn how to do this. Uh, using the software and especially now with the Lightroom you don't even have to get out of Lightroom now when I recreate this it probably won't be exactly the same but I'll go through the steps just to show you so in the masks here you will notice that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine masks in total so I'm going to reset this image and you can see here all the masks, the various masks that were used for this. I'm going to reset the image and I'm going to take you through the steps involved and why I decided to do certain things with this one. So I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to delete all masks. So there we have the first image. I'm going to dive right into this and I'm going to add the first mask that I'll used so i'm going to add a radial gradient and the radial gradient i'm just going to drag about there and i may have to zoom out just slightly just so that we can see this now i'm going to overlay this and the good thing about lightroom when you use these is they are totally editable even after the fact so i'm going to drop that in just around there and I'm also going to colour it. Now this one I'm going to colour and it probably, as I said, it probably won't be exactly the same as last time. But we will just see what we can do with it. So I'm going to put that about there. I'm going to push the saturation slightly. And you'll notice that saturation works best on the skin tones here. So I'm going to push the saturation slightly for this. I may also dial in a slight tint as well, just to about there. Right, that's okay with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intersect that mask with the subject. And I'll let Lightroom do its thing. And there you go. That's the mask intersected with the subject. Now, in the opposite side here, I'll zoom back out a bit. On the opposite side, I'm going to create another mask. And I'm going to work with green in this case. So to do this, I am going to go create new mask, radial gradient again, zoom back out, and I'll create another one just around about there. Rotate that again. So what we're doing is we're building up masks. Now, the reason I didn't copy that mask in case you think, why not just copy the mask? If you copy the mask, especially when a colour is applied to it, I have noticed that it takes on all the attributes of that mask. Although it's intersected with, in that case, the subject, it still takes on the attributes of the mask. So if I change the colour, the colour in the original mask changes as well. So that's why I'm creating a new mask for each one, because it's got different attributes to it. Again, I'm going to colour this one. And as I said, I'm going to go for the green. Let's just enhance that slightly. I'm also going to push the contrast. And I'm going to jump back to the original mask. And I'm going to push the contrast in that one as well. Because you'll find that the gels, to emulate the gels, the more contrasty the image when you're doing it this way will work better. So that's us. We have two masks. But I've still to intersect this one with... The subject so I'm just going to let that run through its thing and that's it intersected with subject if I hover over there you can see that it's intersected with the subject so that says I'm quite happy there now there's a few other things that doesn't look good and with that as well you can see that it looks as if it's just been cars applied to this and I'm using radial gradients on this just simply because of the background elements here. I could have used a linear gradient to do this, but I felt as if because it's a circular or oval shape in this case, 
it works slightly better again. Right, I want to increase some of this in here. So now I'm going to duplicate the mask and I'm doing that by right clicking on here and I'm just going to go duplicate radial gradient. So you'll notice that that there has been duplicated and if I take that off and put it back on you'll notice a slight difference in it. So just to show you that it changes colour if I go blue everything changes to blue but I don't want to do that. I'm going to step back to the green. There we go. What I can do though is I can increase and decrease the exposure just slightly just to get the better effect that I'm seeking for this and I'm going to push the contrast slightly. So there we go again everything's changed. Am I happy with that? No. And the reason is because every time I change that it changes the, art of the attributes to, of the original mask here. So if I go in there and I'm actually going to delete that mask so that I've got that original green, I'm going to create a new one. And that's the reason I had so many masks at the beginning. So I'm going to go in and create a new radial gradient. I'm just going to pull it up to about there, place it there so you get the idea with this. I'm also going to colorize it and I'll go in for the green again. Enhances it even further. So I'm going to repeat that for the red as well, but first of all, I am going to go in and intersect with subject and I'll let that run through. What I'm also going to do is rename them. So that's red one. So you can see, just to get into the habit of naming them in here, I'm going to go back and create a new one. Radial gradient, you get the idea of what we're doing here. And I am just going to go in here. But this radial gradient is going to be slightly different. And the reason this one's going to be different is because when the light emits, it changes the highlights in certain areas. So I know that when I chose this, I chose that red. And you can see that there. I'll intersect this first. Intersect with subject. And while it's running through that, I'll wait and I will call this red 2. Turn off show overlay so that you can see what's happening. And I'm going to dial in a red to this. Click OK. Dial in a red, do that again. Click OK. So we now have that red and it's a deeper red. I'm also going to push the exposure of it just slightly, as if the light is interacting with the skin and just helping to boost the highlights here. You'll notice that we have highlights up there, but I just want it to interact here slightly better. Now, if I go into the show overlay and I hover over that, I can actually increase that. As you know, everything is editable. Bring it down. And because I've created a new mask, it is not changing the attributes of the previous mask with it. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to push the highlights in this one. Just slightly. Just to give it that effect. I can jump back to green too. And I can push the highlights in that slightly. So I'm going to push that quite a bit just so that you can see that what's happening. So we've now got that effect. And it's not as good as shooting gels in the studio, but it lets you see how to create it and what to think about when you're doing it. Now, I'm going to add a couple more things to this. And again, with radials. And it's based on the previous video. So I'm going to create a new mask. And again, a radial. So everything in this entire video is radials. I'm going to create that there. I'm going to rotate it that way. And I'm going to drop it in just roughly about there, maybe extend it slightly, pull it that way slightly. Now this new one I am going to call BG1, which is background one. And I'm going to add a slight colour to this, this time I'm going to add the blue, just around about there. It's just an example so it doesn't really matter and then I'm going to push the exposure. So you can see already that's beginning to separate the model from the background. Again, intersect mask with subject. Lightroom's really quick at this. So right now, that 
is on the model, as you can see there. And where we need it to be, is we need it to be on the background. So if we just go down and click Invert, you'll notice that that drops there. Now I can get in and play around with this, I can push the contrast, I can bring it right back, but we're looking for just subtle effects. I can hover over it, bring it in slightly, increase the feathering, decrease the feathering to more of a harder light, and do that. I'm going to bring this one in slightly, and I'm going to move it up to about there. And then I'm going to create another one. Create new mask. And this time, again, radio. And I'm just going to draw that one there. And rotate it. Take it down and place it within there. Rotate it again, just slightly. And bring it across to about there. Again, I'm going to intersect this. Intersect with subject. So you, hopefully you get the idea. It's just repetition, repetition, repetition. But the final effect can be quite good. So what I'll do is I'll undock this just to let you see. So we've got these different masks here that we've created. And not, it's not perfect by any means at all. But being able to do this and create images like this within Lightroom, it's just fantastic. Don't even have to jump into Photoshop for anything like this. And I'll just show you the before and after. There's the before and after. That didn't take too long. Probably takes longer for me to explain what I'm doing than it does for you to actually do it. Something that I think it will do is allow you to experiment further with your images. And as I said, the fact that I don't even have to come out of Lightroom to complete the image is even better. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something from the video and I'll see you in the next video.